Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and we are into the Physics Surgery Quickies series and I have brought forward to you a very interesting question from the NSCP 2022 question paper. The paper was uh, slightly on the easier side, having questions uh, from very standard sources. So if you are studying in a uh, decent coaching center online or offline and having uh, done some of their DPP problems or something, most of the questions will match from a lot of sources. So, But I found one intriguing question among all of them, which I'm going to present to you. It's about a fast-moving electron beam. Uh, he has used the word relativistic also. I'll present the question. In which a proton is stabbed and he's talking about transverse oscillations. So language was very, very important. And a lot of students, because of the multi-conceptual nature of this question, got confused. So I would like to introduce that. Before we move on, right, uh, one small request uh, so that I can continue uh, posting such videos on this channel, right? So the recent, um, the channel reach has not uh, increased. So it, it is very imperative from your side that whatever love you have been showing, right, in a uh, indirect manner, I would like to request you to show it directly, right? So the reach can increase only if you like, share and subscribe to the channel. So I would really love to produce more and more such innovative videos and share the knowledge on this particular platform. So it all depends on you. And also I have started a Hindi channel recently. So please do check out the link of that channel is in the uh, channel tab of this particular uh, channel itself. Okay, so let's move forward and let me present you the question. The frequency of transverse oscillations of a proton of mass m trapped in a cylindrical relativistic electron beam of cross section of radius r and current i is given by assume the speed of this uh, electrons is c and which is same as speed of light in vacuum <clears throat> and very importantly he's asking us to ignore magnetic effect okay so a lot of students got confused because of this word relativity and all that right and thought this was slightly out of their je advanced syllabus or the ncrt textbook okay so i would recommend you to uh, pause the video here if you are watching this question for the first time uh, try to uh, attempt it for two or three minutes and then come back for the concept explanation and also at the end some pro uh, practice problems on a similar model one from a standard source and from one from my source. Okay, so let's try to see that. I hope you have given it a try. So in this particular question, you should realize that this relativistic speed uh, is equivalent to any other speed itself. And we are supposed to use non-relativistic ideology here, right? And that, the, that comes from the fact that there is no magnetic effect being considered. So what is meant by magnetic effect? This electron beam will not interact in a magnetic manner with the proton that is inside. And there is a practicality to that also. As you study in electromagnetism chapter, the electric forces would be much more powerful than the magnetic forces at the simultaneous stage. Okay, so because of that, there will be an issue. And uh, whenever velocity is very small, we ignore them. But once the velocity reaches relativistically high values, we cannot ignore that. But for the sake of problem solving in a simple exam like NSCP, uh, they have asked us to ignore those effects. So this C, even though he's talking about relativistic uh, electron, is not going to alter your solution or thinking in a non-relativistic manner in this question. Okay, so let me present to you a similar question from Irado, where this kind of beam of electrons and its electric field on its surface or inside was already asked. There are actually quite a few number of Irado questions on such a concept. I'll present to you one and later give one more on the practice problem list. Okay, so this is the question I was trying to talk about. When I saw the actual question in NSCP, immediately this question flashed to me in my mind. Okay, so it's an extension of 3.210 where you could see a proton beam which has certain velocity due to the acceleration through a potential difference and is asking electric field strength on the surface of the beam. You can also calculate electric field within inside the beam also. And what is the crux of solving the present NSCP problem. Okay, I hope you can give this particular problem also a try, right? And solution will be available. And in case you want it, I will produce it on this channel itself. So let us go back to the NSCP question and check concept by concept, what are the things that you need to know? Okay, so this concept number one, which is a standard one on the left hand side, you can pick this picture from any of your standard textbooks, where whenever any 
um, shifting electron beam with a drift velocity of VD is moving across a cross section area A, it is very clear and basic that we derive that the value of current across this cross section would be NEA VD. Let me explain. N is the number of charges per unit volume. E is the value of each charge. A is the area of cross section and VD is the drift speed. In our present problem, this drift speed can be equivalently taken as the C velocity that he has given. Okay, so this will become NEAC. Oh, one more thing. I think if these electrons are moving so fast and it's a very long beam, you can almost consider this particular system as a static charge system. Then you can question me saying, how can you consider static charges and electrostatics ideas when electrons are moving? You should understand that once this electron moves to the left, another electron occupies its, its space. So any other victim, like this, in this case, the proton or a test charge, will experience the same electrostatic field even though electrons are moving very fast. It's almost like new electrons within this gap replace the old electrons, thereby creating an illusion of a static field. Okay, so that is the main idea here. Okay, so what is the value of the charge density of that static uh, charge distribution? Okay, so this is number per unit volume, which is N into E. This N into E will be the charge per unit volume, which is what I wrote as rho naught. Okay, so the equivalent charge density, once you substitute this number here, would for, for this problem come out to be current divided by A into C. This is the concept number one. Second one is we need to know what is the electric field inside the cylinder so that we can understand what proton is experiencing. Okay, so that's pretty basic again, right? You need to know how to apply Gauss law uh, within a cylindrical charge density of rho naught and uh, very uh, quick application of that Gauss law over a cylindrical surface here will produce E into 2 pi RL is equal to charge enclosed by this, which will be related to rho naught into the volume of this Gaussian surface volume. Okay, when you do that, at the distance smaller from the center, inside the cylinder, you'll get a linear relation for the electric field. Okay, so that linear relation is shown on this graph. Outside, it will fall off as 1 by R because the charge is a fixed value. Okay, so this particular thing, if I substitute it in the present context, you'll end up getting this answer. Okay, so what I did is the rho naught from the previous page, I substituted here in terms of the current that is flowing. Okay, I hope this is very, very clear. And let's move on to... Now try to calculate what is the restoring force on a proton that is placed here. All these orange charges of electrons, I'm assuming it as now a static electric uh, charge distribution of density rho that I already know. So from which I, in the previous page, calculated the electric field as a linear function at a distance smaller. Imagine the proton is here, it will be pulled back towards the center, causing it to have a restoring force value of that restoring force would be given by charge of the proton should be taken as small e. Small e into this capital E will give you the restoring force. And then the value of acceleration towards the center would be this number. Now, whenever acceleration is proportional to the distance from the center, we can assume that this is going to execute a SHM, simple harmonic motion, for which the frequency of oscillations are given by this particular term, square of this uh, uh, omega would be this term. Therefore, the frequency would be this number. I took a square root of this. 1 by 2 pi gives you a linear frequency, which is what he wanted. And if you check the options, the capital A has been replaced with pi capital R square. So pi capital R square R comes out to make it slightly confusing for the students. So this is the final answer. I think option A was the required answer. Okay. So let's move on to the practice problems now. So this is the practice problem one on a similar flow of charges from one place to another place and an electronic current. And the interesting part about this one is it's slightly tougher because as these charges keep moving, new charges get generated in this problem. I absolutely love this question and slightly on a tougher side, but I hope you can do this. And in case you would like to have a solution for this in a very detailed and a proper explanative manner, please try to comment below. We'll do that in the Irido Select Solution series that we have on our channel. Okay, right. And to have uh, or to have a look at already produced Irido, Irido Select Solution series problems, please look at the link at the i button above. You can 
play the playlist of the already produced problems previously. Okay, practice problem two, I have taken it from the DPP of our crash course. And uh, this is the, I think at this point of the video, we are going through current electricity and capacitors dielectrics uh, week. In the crash course, I have picked up a problem from the DPP. Again, a beam of fast moving electrons. And this time we are talking about a pressure versus the current relation. Okay, so different mechanical and physical quantities that you can calculate for the same situation is highlighted through this problem. Okay, if you want to see many more such problems and have a look at our uh, crash courses, okay, and what is that crash course? I have put the information about the app of uh, physics surgery and the rest of the things in the pinned comment below. Check it out. Or, or you want to try this particular problem in YouTube itself, please comment your answer below along with the timestamp of this particular problem. I'll respond whether you have done it correctly or not. Okay, so I hope all that is uh, considered by you. And uh, please do please do like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget it. That is a lifeline for this channel. And uh, once this channel is revived, and uh, if you are an old subscriber, you know what wonders it can do to the students watching here. Okay, so thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video.